But first of all, I'd like to say a happy birthday to everyone who has birthday today. <laughs> uh, now we come to my talk. <laughs> so, um, so it's good you're still here because like, I have not that much knowledge of blockchains and such things. Although I speak at this meetup, so this is not related to blockchains at all. But still fun anyway. So let's get started. So yeah, so it's about noise. It's a search in a minute search index. And uh, I quickly say it because yeah, as I'm new to this community and all, so I my background is from Geo and databases mostly, and I code in Rust, Python, JavaScript, and Erlang. So I spent the past seven years coding in Erlang, and I love open source. And yeah, so noise. Um, it is an indexing engine, and it's heavily based around JSON, and it does indexing things. You can search things. You can put them in. You can get them out. And the query mechanism is based on a system called Query by Example. It's from the 70s, and you probably haven't heard of it before, because like it was the same time as SQL was invented, and I guess you know which system won the war, basically. And um, but. I think it's cool anyway, and before I talk more about the technical stuff, I just give a demo because then it will be clear what's going on. So, uh, yeah, so the demo just shows kind of the query language and everything. So I have a database pre-populated with data, and let's see what's in there. So we try to find something, and this means basically everything, and for now we just, uh, yeah, return like all of the records, but we limit it to one, so we, because we don't want to have a full dump of the database in the browser. So this was in the browser. And so what we see here, oh, it's a database of a CVE, so it's about the vulnerabilities and, and exploits and such things. And as you can see, it's a JSON document. And now we want to deep dive into some, some things. So for example, we want to know like, how much data do I have in the database? So we just make return all the documents and just return the count. So let's see. Oh, 80,000. So that's, that's a dump from like four weeks ago or something. And yeah, you've seen already the, if I return a single document, like the, that's the whole document that was put into there. And of course, I do not always want to return the full document if I do a query on the database. I want to have a subset only. So, and for uh, CVEs, the interesting thing is normally really the, the ID. So I just say, okay, give me the ID. So I say dot ID, and I only get back the ID. And of course you can now, like, now it makes sense to kind of increase it and see like, uh, yeah, so we have more like many things in there. So, but of course you all do not want to do a full table scan all the time, but you just want to restrict it to some some property. So let's say, um, so there was, I need to go back and show you the um, fields. So it has a summary. And as with exploits and so on, uh, uh, often the summary contains things like um, stack, obviously, like stack overflows and such things. Oh, yeah, thanks, uh, Marie. Oh, it is even caught by the by the spell checking. That's nice. So, so I want to search for all documents that have in the summary the word stack. And of course, this time I don't want to have a limit, but just le let me see how how many they are actually. Like how many do how many those exploits contain the word stack? Um, let's see. Oh, I like I come back to query by example. So basically what it looks like, so if I remove the operator, it means like this looks like proper JSON. And to basically make the query, so you build up your JSON, like an example of what you want out, and then you just put an operator in front of the thing you want to query on. And this is like the full text operator, and I want to query um, with the word stack. So as you can see, it's 2000 documents. And um, of course, we can also return the, let's say 10 limit, 90, it doesn't matter. So we have a closer look on the on the um, documents. So, for example, there are even more interesting ones. Like those are quite small ones, but then there are bigger ones, which have a so-called KPEG thing. This is kind of like a classification for those exploits. The details don't really matter, but it's interesting <coughs> because, like, it's again a deeply nested document with a lot of information. And as I said, we can also like 
do really a query on a subset. So let's say I want all the the documents which have the such a KPIC item. So now we get really into the query by example. So I want to have KPIC. So I just said, okay, I want to have the KPIC. And as you can see, it's an array. So I just open the array, close the array again. And within those I have objects. And now I want to query on the solutions item. So I say solutions, colon. And I, I, for now I just do full text queries because like that's, yeah. Because it's mostly text in those items. So now this looks like proper JSON again, and I put the operator in front of what I search for. So I, do the f I use the full text operator and search for all the solutions that contain browser. So let's see what happens. So now just to verify that it actually works, so I search for browser. Let's see. So here, the solution the solutions contains browser, and. But again, it's like, well, I get like the full full document, but perhaps I only really, so you can see that, oh, where's my browser here? That I now have um, this object in this browser, but there's another one, and I probably would only return really those items that contains the key, that where the solution contains browser. So that's simple, it's called a variable binding. So I say, use, introduce a variable. I just call it kpick because it's an easy name, but I can also call it so we have a difference, kpick123. And now I just return all the objects that match this clause. So I return the kpick123. Let's see what's happening. So now you can see if I search for browser, uh, the solution is here. But now the document stops, so you can see that there's a new one starting. And it's again only like a single so like a solution which contains browser. This has two solutions which have browser in the in the two two um, classifications which have solutions in the browser and the solutions. And yeah, and now of course you can um, also really just um, return, for example, the uh, the solution itself. So you can just use the dot donation, you know, from JavaScript and say, I really want to return the solution only. Solutions. Because clearly matches on the four things. So again, it's a small subset only. But now you might think, okay, now I have the solution, but I don't know like which CV it was. Well, that's again simple. So I just return the CV as well. So I use CV. And from the beginning, I had the dot ID thing. And I return, let's call it solve for solution. I don't need the quotes. I call it solve for solutions. <coughs> and return the JSON. And now you can see I have the CVE and the solve for solution. So that's kind of about the query language to give you an, an idea like, like how the query language works like because like, that's the central point of the system. And I will now also like show you the contrasted to, to the like yeah other systems. So um, the usage you said you can basically just insert any JSON you want. Um, and it has automatic indexing. So I've only searched showed you the full text capabilities, but like strings become a full text index, numbers you can then create ranges. So for example if they have a timestamp you can search for all CVEs in, in, inside a certain date range. And this is what I've mostly spent the last year on was that if you have GeoJSON in there, it creates bounding boxes, so you can also do geo queries. So one demo I gave a few months ago was about uh, weather alerts. So you search for weather alerts in your area in a certain date range with the keyword rain or something, or heavy rain. And the technologies that I use is, so um, it has a JavaScript API, <coughs> but the actual system is coded in Rust. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard Rust before, it's uh, it's fast and safe, and I would say that's not the official thing, but I would say it's a better C or C++. Like it has the full power of C or C++, but it's just like better guarantees, easy to code, a good tool chain. It's really great really coding, and the back end we currently use RocksDB because it really fits the way we're doing it pretty well, 
and for the geo queries, I needed to fork RocksDB to support multi-dimensional indexing. So if you want to hear about more about multi-dimensional indexing, talk to me. I've spent the past seven years with it, so <laughs> um, yeah, so I know a bit about it. And so how is this different? Because now it's okay, well, it's like a normal search thing. I could just use Elasticsearch for it. That's for sure. But it's different in a way that um, I call it traditional full text search. Elasticsearch also gets a bit into a different direction, but often it's the case that you first you have the data, then you create a mapping for your data on how you put it into your full text index, and you kind of flatten your data because you only really get the, the text fields out or something. But as you saw on the examples, I really preserve the JSON structure, so you really can query on a JSON structure. You don't need to create a mapping upfront, but you can just put it in and query it. Then there's also another thing with their document databases that use kind of a SQL dialect to query on JSON. But the problem I see there is you often, or the example I know is they introduce new keywords and you kind of flatten your JSON for your query because SQL really works on tables. This is what it was built for. And if you work on JSON, you need to somehow flatten your JSON in order to work with the, with the SQL language. But I then wonder, like, why do you store it in JSON in first place if you then need to flat it on query time? And yeah, so as I said, it preserves the structure for query as well as when you, yeah, for the queries. And yeah, we, we didn't insert it. So finally, we, so this is kind of a new slide because what's the relation to IPFS? Um, so the interesting thing, there might be overlap. And now it becomes interesting. So the first part is the difficult one. I, I don't think I have told anyone from the team yet what I had in mind, so I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not. So we talked about like using at least a query language to query like the underlying data structure, but I had like a day ago I had a cool idea on how to do it differently from what we've talked about. And the other one, yeah, it's, it's a simple one. So I start with the first one. Could you use the query language itself without the underlying indexing kind of thing that it does? Um, so we use just a syntax, and my idea would be that kind of IPFS, so the underlying system for IPFS is IPLD, which kind of stores the whole, it's kind of a graph with small blocks connected somehow, to, to keep it simple. What you could do is, um, of course this graph could contain, like, it could be also a blockchain. So it doesn't really have any JSON you could index, but what you could think of, you expose all those blocks, as JSON somehow. So kind of create a custom view of your data in JSON, and then you can use this JSON to query on. And you, the queries currently really work on the JSON data structure, but in this case, for example, you could handcraft your kind of your query engine. So what I mean with it is, let's give you an example, your underlying graph is a Git repository. And now you want to know all commits from a certain author. So it poses as JSON, and then the, the query engine kind of would just traverse the graph without any secondary indexing structure. It would just traverse the graph and return you all the all the commits from a certain author. Of course, it won't be fast. Yeah. I'm trying to understand, are you talking about indexing your own node or the whole network? In this case, you would index at all. It will be like a dynamic created view over your like okay no so it won't be an indexing but it of course needs to um, needs to expose some JSON and this will be like node local but as every node exposes it it would probably just traverse all the nodes if you query it so it would be basically a huge graph traversal so this is really like this would be really not about like high performance queries on graphs but it will be just like to get an idea or like have an, at least a way of creating your graph without creating custom infrastructure, basically. Okay. Um, because the Akin yeah. blockchain today is easy in the sense yeah. that every node has the whole yeah. data, but in APFS that's very, yeah. very different. Yeah, and then you, of course, like, so it would be super slow, but it would give you, and which is also kind of the idea of noise as well, you have a chance to kind of like get information about what data is in there and make sense of it, and then you can then uh, use it as a basis to write more, more efficient things, for example. And the other way is, this is what I prefer, is that you really use noise, the, the whole system with the indexing as, um, 
a local node system. So you would again serialize as before your data source JSON, but then you really create an index on every node with the JSON data. And then of course, if you would search, you would need to ask all nodes um, for the query and see if it responds what you need. But perhaps it could again be that um, IPLD or IPFS already knows or can exclude certain nodes and knows, okay, this node definitely not doesn't contain the data, I don't even query it. But that's again like, uh, this is just an idea, so basically if this happens, I don't know, uh, but uh, it would be cool, I think, to kind of have noise basically the, the search engine for distributed IPSS or IPLD nodes. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, yeah. Are you familiar with uh, Open Bazaar? Uh, yeah, roughly, like not on technical details, but I know what it is. And, yeah. So, so one of the yeah. main problems of the first version was the search engine. I don't know about the yeah. second version that's out now. Uh, I think they're using APFS. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know if they have an integrated search engine. No. There, yeah. there is another project called Dual Search, which okay. is a search on top of Open Bazaar. So it's not, they haven't married the solution yet. So is it based on something similar to that, I guess? To this? No, it's different. Like, okay. It's a more traditional search engine, more... Like what Booker, and I correct me if I'm saying this wrong, is saying is like, given that every node can index their own data, mm -hmm. and that you can access other nodes indexes, because after all, they are just a file that you can transfer to IPFS, uh, you can either do a, a traversal through a graph or a transformation on a graph that you can execute out locally by keep pulling the nodes and keep pulling all the other indexes. Or you can just send these transformations to other nodes and ask them, hey, can you transform the data that you have locally and give back to me the result? Right? So kind of like a, a massive uh, synchronized database but like that all the IPFS nodes share that does require you to move every single global data to the same nodes then execute the query. But if you allow that, doesn't it create a very big problem of denial of service to your nodes? You should not have that by default in, say, turned on in every single IPFS node. This is more as in, imagine that like you have a very large organization or organizations that are collaborating with each other in data, for example, digital archives. And like imagine you have Internet Archive and ArchivePT and Smithsonian, and they all have all these data sets and they want to create a platform for the users to scan through the data sets very efficiently, they can, using IPFS, first to share the data, and then noise, or, yeah, noise to like, then search through all the data that they have indexed so far. And anyone in the community can then subscribe to those indexes, and then we can go back to the reputation mechanism, uh, or anyone in the community can also contribute um, to those indexes and create new sources, uh, new views, new curations. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I'd like to add that basically so it's to the point of n n noise in c compared to other services released, like it's like it's really like an embedded kind of thing and not like a server solution. So because like if you would, would create a server solution for this thing, you would again have like a single point of failure kind of like your your search okay. cluster, okay. and that's of course not what you want. And yeah, and of course you could use the existing solutions for such <laughs> things, but I don't know if you really want one like an, a, like a single node elastic search on your node. So that's like this which yeah. wants to be the sweet spot. Any questions or comments? Is it available yeah. now? Can uh, yes, uh, so basically, yeah, okay, I've got to say, so, so I was coding it for, uh, so, so this project is, so it's not only me, so this project was created like two years ago roughly, so it's together with Damien Katz, the creator of CouchDB, and we both worked on it for the past one and a half, two years together on it full time, and um, it's available on GitHub, um, and yeah, it's under Apache and MIT license, and yeah, so there's a script of the query language and it yeah, basically works, you can just check it out. You can also do basically an npm install, noise search, and then get started. But be aware like it takes a long time to, to compile because like basically, so it's really not JavaScript, it's just the binding, so it downloads, RocksDB compiles it, compiles noise, and then you have the binding. So it would take a while, but then you can just get started. All right. 
Right, thanks. Thank you.